Let's talk about mass number and atomic weight. These things can seem very similar, but they're actually quite different. So up here, I got two atoms. And I'm particularly interested in the number of protons and neutrons that are in the nucleus of both these atoms. So the protons are in red, the neutrons are in blue. We can count them up. The atom over here has five protons and five neutrons, while the atom on this side also has five protons but has six neutrons. So mass number, if, as you may remember, is the number of protons plus a number of neutrons. So the atom over here has a mass number of 10, and the atom here has a mass number of 11, 5 plus 6. OK, now the mass number also tells us a little bit about how much the atom actually weighs. Because it turns out that one proton or one neutron weighs just about one AMU, one atomic mass unit. It's a unit that we can use to measure how much an atom weighs. So if we have 10 protons and neutrons over here with a mass number of 10, that means that this atom is going to weigh about 10 AMU, 10 atomic mass units. And our atom over here with a mass number of 11 is going to weigh about 11 AMU. OK, so that's mass number. Mass number is something that we can use to describe an atom. It's protons plus neutrons. And it tells us a little bit about how much that atom weighs in atomic mass units. Now let's move on to talk about atomic weight. So you might notice here that both of these atoms have the same number of protons, which means that they are the same element, right? Because the number of protons that an atom has in its nucleus determines what element it is. So what element are these two atoms? We can look on the periodic table to find that out. And it turns out that boron, with an atomic number of 5, is what both of these atoms are, because they have 5 protons in their nucleus. So these two atoms are both different versions of boron. Different versions of boron that have a different number of neutrons, but the same number of protons. We call these isotopes. Okay, Isotopes are like different versions of an atom that have the same number of protons, but differ in their number of neutrons. So, this atom over here, we call it boron 10. That's its isotope name because 10, the mass number is 10. And this one over here is boron 11 because it has a mass number of 11. So two versions of boron. Now, there are billions and trillions, gazillions of boron atoms in the world. And if you picked out one boron atom, it could be either of these two versions. Okay, It could be either a boron 10 atom with 5 neutrons, or it could be a boron 11 atom with 6 neutrons. But here's the thing. There's not the same number of boron 10 and boron 11 atoms in the world. Okay, If we picked out 50 random boron atoms, just anywhere, this is what they'd look like. Okay? The vast majority of them would be these orange boron 11 atoms. And a much smaller minority would be uh, boron 10, which I'm representing with these, these green circles here. It turns out that if we do the math, that only about 20% of all of the boron atoms in the world are boron 10 with five neutrons. And 80%, the vast majority, are boron 11 atoms. We can look at what this looks like on a pie graph just to get a better idea of boron 11 taking up all this room as opposed to the small amount of boron 10 atoms. So 20% of the atoms of boron are boron 10. 80% of the atoms of boron are boron 11. This leads us right to the question that atomic weight asks. And atomic weight asks us, what is the average mass of a boron atom? So some of them weigh 10 AMU, others weigh 11 AMU. What is the average mass of a boron atom? Now, you might think average. That's easy. 10 AMU plus 11 AMU, and I can divide by 2. But no, that's wrong. That's not the right way to find the average mass of a boron atom. Here's why that's wrong. 
Because this formula, 10 plus 11 divided by 2, that assumes that we have the same number of boron 10 and boron 11. If it were 50% this and 50% that, then sure enough, we could just add up the two weights and divide by 2. But because we have only 20% of this and 80% of this, we can't just add them up and divide by 2. We have to use a more complicated equation that takes into account the amount of each that we have. Here's how we do that. Here's how we would determine the atomic weight. Okay, so boron 10, we have 20% of the total boron atoms are boron 10. So we're going to do 20% times 10 AMU, which is what the boron 10 atom weighs. And then we're going to go over here and do 80%, that's how much boron 11 we have, times 11 AMU. If you want, you can put these in parentheses just so you can see the math a little bit easier. When we end up multiplying this out, we'll have to convert the percentages into decimals, into 0.2 and 0.8. We end up with 10.8 AMU. That is the average mass of a boron atom when you take into account that they're only 20% 10 and 80% 11. So the average mass turns out to be a lot closer to 11 AMU than it is to 10. And that makes sense because there's so many more of these. The average should be closer to 11 AMU than to 10. And here's the final thing. Now, you know what this number is here at the bottom of these elements on the periodic table. 10.8. This isn't a mass number. This is an atomic weight. This tells you the average mass of a boron atom based on the fact that there are different amounts of the different isotopes. So just to review, mass number is something that applies to an individual atom or to an individual isotope. Okay, the mass number of this is 10 because it has 5 protons and 5 neutrons. The mass number of this is 11 because it has 5 protons and 6 neutrons. But these are individual atoms or individual isotopes. Atomic weight takes these two isotopes into account and it also takes into account the amount of each that we have. 20% of this, 80% of this. So we have to use these percentages when we do the math to figure out what the average mass of all the different types of boron would be. So, if you want to learn more about atomic weight, there's some videos on that that go into more depth about how to actually do the math, but this video should give you a good conceptual understanding of the difference between mass number and atomic weight.